Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. This is the new Volkswagen Golf, and it's a very important car, this. You see, Volkswagen has been selling the Golf for 45 years, and during that time, they've shifted 35 million of them. So it's vital I give this a thorough reviewing. And to do that, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior design. What has they done to my face? Show you inside. It's definitely a Golf, but there's something different. Test out some of its technology. Why don't you understand me, you moron? And of course, take it for a drive. Yeah! What the f is it doing? No way. I've never seen that before. Can you trick it? Oh, f Now, before we get into all of that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. That way, you won't miss any of our awesome videos. Let's kick off this review by talking about the evolving design of the Volkswagen Golf. So in 1974, we had the Mark I, 1983, the Mark II, 1991, the Mark III, 1997, the Mark IV, 2003, the Mark V, 2008, the Mark VI, and in 2012, the Mark VII. And now for 2019, we have the Mark VIII. Yay, yeah, party, the Mark VIII car. What have they done to the front? Looks like it's melted, this strip as well. It's kind of like it's got a monobrow. I'm not sure I like it. What do you reckon? Click on the pop-out banner up there to vote. Have they ruined the look of the Golf? Apparently, this sloping bonnet does improve the aerodynamics. Makes the car more efficient. Down the sides, it's more golf business as usual. I like the alloys. Nice creases in the doors. Oh, look at the back. This looks smart. I like these lights, LED, the back and the front. They look great at night. We've got a new VW badge. It's almost flat, the design's slightly different. And Golf is underneath the badge, which is new. Oh no, look, they're still doing this fake exhaust thing. And it's sort of mimicking an exhaust, but it's like they're trying to move away from it and in denial about the fact that it was supposed to look like an exhaust, but we all know the truth, don't we? Anyway, new Golf Mark 8. It's a case of nice ass. Show them about the face. Now let's talk about size, because of course size does matter, despite what anyone may claim. And there's plenty of room here in the rear of the Golf though it doesn't really feel any bigger than the Mark 7 Golf. In fact, it's pretty much identical, which means it's bigger in the back than a Toyota Corolla, but not quite as roomy as a Ford Focus. The boot is bigger than the Focus is though. It's 380 litres in capacity, which is exactly the same capacity as the Mark 7 Golf's. Wait a minute. This is based on exactly the same chassis as the Mark 7 Golf. They've just revamped the exterior to trick us. They've completely redone this interior. It's barely recognisable as a Golf. The only things that are familiar to me are the felt-lined door pockets, the slightly annoying armrest ah, thing, and the clever little cup holder, which just can grab smaller bottles. The rest of it, though, wow, it's well modern. Golfs have never felt dead modern inside. They're pretty conservative, really, but this is avant-garde, baby. Look at these two screens. I mean, this is what it's all about. In the UK, you get two large screens as standard. And, whoa, see that? Wasn't expecting that. It's got gesture control. <laughs> it's erratic. <laughs> I like the way it makes a kind of like a kung fu movie style noise when you do it, when you finally do it. Also, there's no physical buttons, really. Instead, you have like these touch pads. So volume, you just slide that along. For the climate control, you slide that along like that. If you want to get the heated seats up, you double press it, then you can operate the heated seats. It's a bit weird at first, but it's nice not to have any buttons. It makes this design very clean. There are buttons here to access various menus on the infotainment system, and they're touch sensitive, so they might be a bit hard to prod when you're driving, but you'll probably get used to it. Also, this centre console has your gear selector, and if you have automatics, you don't have a big lever anymore. You've got this little paddle there that you use to go into drive or reverse. I quite like that. It frees up space, which means you now have a really handy cubby there. Don't know what that's designed for. There's also a big tray there for your mobile phone, and of course you've got wireless charging. Then you've got your digital instrument dials, which have loads of functionality. You can swipe through different menus, change the layout, 
control lots of the car's functions using it and the steering wheel made controls. This particular car also has a heads up display. Then the controls for your lights are over here. Once again, touch sensitive buttons. The only thing that are like old fashioned buttons are over here for the window switches and the door mirrors. The infotainment system is quite nicely laid out and the graphics are very sharp. It is a bit annoying that to go into the climate control menu, you have to press a button down here first before you can do the different functions. But that's not too much of a problem because you can control most things using normal voice commands. And I'll show you how now. Hello Volkswagen. What would you like to do? My bottom's cold. Sorry. It's not your fault, but try and help me out here. Put my heated seat on. Search for shop nearby. Yeah, do you know what? It's supposed to Sorry. understand. Unable to find any P Shut up. It's supposed to understand normal voice commands and in a car I drove yesterday it did. When I said my bottom's cold, it turned on the heated seat. I'm going to try again. Hello Volkswagen. What can I do for you? I've got a cold bum. Dialed numbers. Please connect a phone via Bluetooth first. Hello Volkswagen, my bum's cold. Got it. The front left seat will get warmer shortly. It does know where the voice is coming from, so it's only turned on my seat, not the passenger seat. And if the passenger has said it, it'd have picked that up, supposedly, and turned their heated seat on. Let's see if it understands this now. Hello Volkswagen, I've got a hot ass. Search for harbour nearby. Hello Volkswagen, my ass is hot. No problem. The front left seat will get cooler shortly. These systems, they're all right, but they're not fully sorted. It's not like talking to a human. In the end, you're just going to press the buttons, aren't you? What I can't fault, though, is the connectivity. So if you've got an Apple phone, you can connect to Apple CarPlay and run your mobile phone's devices through this screen using Bluetooth. You don't have to use a wire to connect your phone. However, if you've got an Android phone like me, then you still have to connect with a wire. Why is it that Android users are always second-class citizens? Anyway, let's talk about interior quality because it's good in here, as you'd expect from a Golf. Squidgy, squidgy. Oh, I quite like this bit of trim. And it's squidgy on there as well, though the door tops in the back are hard plastic, though that was the case in the Mark 7 Golf and most cars in this category anyway. In terms of equipment levels, pretty good right across the range. The entry-level car is called the Golf. The next one up is called the Life. The one after that is called the Style, which is fully loaded, and that's what this car is. You'll also be able to get an R-Line, which has a sporty interior and exterior. It's all rather nice. Let's talk engines. Exciting. Now you can get the new Golf with this 1.5 litre turbo petrol with either 130 or 150 horsepower, which is my favourite. And then there's this two litre diesel with either 115 or 150 horsepower. And they've improved the efficiency of this, so the NOx emissions are down by up to 80%. Next, there is the plug-in hybrid, 1.4 litre turbo petrol engine, electric motor, which can drive the car up to 60 kilometres on electric power alone. Combined, you either have 204 horsepower or 245 horsepower in the GTE. Finally, there's the little one litre, and that has either 90 horsepower or 110 horsepower. If you get this engine with the dual clutch automatic gearbox or the 1.5 litre turbo petrol with the DSG gearbox, then you get mild hybrid technology for improved economy. Anyway, let's get on to something a bit more exciting. Let's start off by driving the new 1.5 litre ETSI mild hybrid. So this has a little electric motor fitted to the engine. It acts as a starter motor, but when you're slowing, it can actually recoup lost energy, store it in a battery, then use it to supplement the engine's performance. And that helps improve the economy. So does the fact that when you lift off the accelerator, the engine can just cut. Look, there it's just cut. And now I'm just coasting. That means I'm not using any fuel. And then when I need some power, it kicks in again and it's seamless, you don't notice it happening at all. So what's also seamless, when you're driving along, this automatic gearbox is pretty good. Though, when you're manoeuvring, it can feel a bit jerky. Anyway, that's this engine tested. Let's try out the diesel. This dark grey car has the two litre TDI with 150 horsepower. It's quite smooth for a diesel and has good pulling power as well. That's all right. Still, it's not as smooth or as quiet as the 1.5 petrol, but it is going to be the one you want if you do lots of motorway miles. This one's averaging 4.9 litres per 100 kilometres, which I think is pretty good. Now you're probably thinking, Matt, don't be trying to tell me about a diesel Volkswagen. What about an electric version of the new Golf? Well, there won't be one. And that's because VW's Golf-sized electric car is the ID3. And with that in mind, I'm gonna jump back into the 1.5 litre petrol, try out with a manual gearbox, test some of its driving aids on the motorway, and switch into a more exciting color. This new Golf is available with Volkswagen's latest active cruise control system. So it'll do that usual thing of using a radar to keep your safe distance from the car in front, 
cameras to read the lines in the road to keep you central. They can also spot where there's a grass verge or a curb. So even if there aren't white lines, it can still auto steer you. Thing is though, can you trick it? like other systems by adding weight to the steering so it thinks that you're applying resistance and therefore there and holding the steering wheel. Let's see. Can I trick you? Can I? Oh, it's oh, wait a minute. Take over steering. It's not working. If I do that though, the system re-engages. I think Volkswagen has got the latest setup where it doesn't actually use that resistance to know that you're holding the steering wheel. Instead, it can actually just sense the slightest touch. That's bloody annoying, that is. It's foiled my dastardly plans. Oh, I've got an idea. Uh, Lewis, can you just rest your finger on the steering wheel for a bit? There we go. Should I be fine? Wait, wait, that's not working either. Right. It senses two hands, the... Goddamn Germans! <laughs> One's not good enough, but two is fine. They think of everything, don't they? <laughs> oh, f Oh, no, that's a problem. If you've got a manual car, it won't work in stop-start traffic, such as then when I went through the tolls. <laughs> it disengages at a very low speed, and then you have to take over yourself. If I'd had the automatic, it can actually do that, bring the car to a complete halt, but obviously you can't with a manual because it can't change gear for you, and it'll just stall. That's one of the problems with having a manual. I wonder what economy I'm doing as well on the motorway. So, seven litres per 100 kilometres while well, I'm driving on the motorway. I suppose this is a good time to point out that this new Golf is really relaxing to do long distances in. It's comfy and it's quiet. The only thing I'm really noticing is a bit of wind noise from here, but that's about it. This particular car is fitted with auto parking. That's nothing new, but they're usually pretty rubbish, so I don't bother using them. I'm going to try this one out. So there's an awkward space there. Will it figure it out? It seems to have recognized it. As this is a manual, I do have to do the brakes, accelerator, and the gears, but it should do the steering itself. What the f is it doing? It's gonna nose me in. No way. I've never seen that before. I thought it was just gonna reverse. It's nosing me in. Oh, this is madness. It's like turned me around and nosed me into this weird space. Come on, come on, come on, do it, do it, it's done it. This is brilliant. <laughs> I've never seen that before, it's nosed me in. So it can reverse you in, it can nose you into a perpendicular parking bay. And of course it can do parallel parking as well. The Volkswagen Golf has always been designed to be super easy to drive and this new one is no exception. It's simple to just navigate you around town because you've got good all round visibility. Also the steering's nice and light. The clutch, it's not too springy. The brakes, they're progressive yet strong when you need them to be. The only thing that annoys me a bit is the gear change. It's a touch notchy. Now this particular car is fitted with the optional adaptive suspension and I can put it into comfort mode and that really slackens things off. But I'm gonna put it to the test now by going up a cobbled street. That is really impressive. I'm hardly feeling the cobbles. In fact, look at this. Here is a bottle of water. I'm gonna place it on the gear lever and you can see it's hardly shaking the water around much at all. This is a really, really comfy car. If it can deal with this, it's gonna be great over speed humps, potholes. You're not gonna have any problems driving this round town. I am super impressed with that. Also, the good news is that you can actually mix and match all the different settings for like the steering weight, the throttle response, and the stiffness of the suspension because there's now an individual mode on the driving select screen. I like that. What I don't like so much though is the fact that if you have one of the lower power cars, one with less than 150 horsepower, you don't have independent rear suspension. You have what's known as a torsion beam rear suspension and the rear wheels are effectively joined together. So if one wheel feels a bump, that shock will be transmitted into the other wheel. So I don't think the lower power cars would have been quite so good over that cobbled road as this one with the independent rear suspension. So be warned about that when you buy one of these things. In fact, if you want to buy one, they're going to start from around £22,000. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see how much you can save on a new Golf, or any car for that matter, at carwow.com. This new Golf is available with progressive steering, which means you have to do less wheel twirling when you want to make a manoeuvre. I want to do a U-turn. Just one full turn, pretty much, gives you full lock. And that makes it just easier to drive. 
Well, it's pretty clear we've established that the new Golf is very, very comfortable, but is it fun to drive? Well, I'm gonna put it into sports mode, and that's added weight to the steering, it's made the throttle response sharper, it's also stiffened up the suspension, and I'm gonna see what it's like down this twisty road. Unlike before, all the car systems now talk to one another, so the steering talks to the dampers, and it also talks to the X differential, which is basically the car's brake system. Brakes and inside wheel to send power to the outside wheel when you go around a corner, and all of those communicate to help maximise your grip. Does it maximise your fun? I must say, I'm quite impressed with how this grips and goes around. It's good, you know. Is it as fun and as engaging as a Ford Focus? Maybe not quite, but there ain't much in it. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Ford Focus, just click up there to watch it. But as an all-round package, this Golf does drive better overall than the Ford Focus. I think this 1.5 TSI engine is helping. 150 horsepower, enough grunt. In fact, it's as quick as an old Golf GTI a Mark IV. Although that wasn't much of a GTI, to be fair. But still, you know what I'm trying to get at, right? Let's see if this car is as quick as an old school hot hatch. So I've got my specialist timing gear up here. I'm gonna time it from naught to 60 miles an hour. Let's do it. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's all right. And that's it. Naught to 60, 8.6 seconds. Not bad for like the middle of the road engine. It's actually all you really need. It's starting to get dark now, so I can show you some of the new Golf's lighting features. On the outside, you have puddle lighting to help guide you into the car, and here on the inside, you have up to 30 different ambient light color choices. They're split up into up to three different levels, so you can mix and match to your heart's desire. Look at that, ooh, even the color of the instrument dials change. Now, if you're struggling to make up your mind, don't worry, there's some preset mood lighting. So the first one is infinity. Then there's eternity. Then there's desire. Then there's euphoria, ooh, exciting. And then there's vitality, which makes you feel wide awake, I guess. Awesome, I really like these features. Another cool lighting feature are the Matrix LED headlamps, which you can get as an option. So each headlamp has 22 individual LEDs in them, and when you're driving along normally, they illuminate the entire road, but when something approaches, they can blank out part of their beam. Actually, as you're driving along, you can just see them working away illuminating parts of the road, then blanking out other parts, illuminating signs so you can see exactly what's going on. Now a car's approaching, it's gonna shut off on the left a bit, go darker, and it's illuminated it again. It's not gonna dazzle the car in front. You can see it's not illuminating the ground so much in front of me now. And it just means you get brilliant visibility at night without bothering anybody. I love them, they're an option well worth having. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Volkswagen Golf Mark 8? Well, I'm not that keen on the new nose, but I do like the interior and it is very nice to drive. And overall, it is the ultimate all-rounder. So it's just like every other Golf before it. Oh, look, some engines. Hmm, let's get technical. What have they done to my face? What have they done to my face? What have they done to my face? <laughs>